everyone, good morning, God bless, welcome to the Good Book Project. I hope all of you are doing very well as I am this morning, simply because God has woken me up for another day of life in health and in wellness, as I hope he has for you as well, in the name of Jesus. Today is day 17 in our Chronological Bible in a Year video podcast. If you've been enjoying our series, please share it on your social media so that other people may be blessed by it too. For day 16, yesterday, we read the beginning story of the story of Abram, who in Genesis 12 through 15 is called by God to leave his familiar place, leave his father's house, to go on a journey. He then goes to Egypt and he fights in a five king war to retrieve his brother's son. Lot. And in chapter 15, we see the Lord make a covenant with Abram that he would be the father of many nations and he would have more descendants than the stars in the sky. We continue with our story today in Genesis 16 for day 17. I will praise into the word and we will get right into it. Father God, we come to you today, Father, praising your holy name, Father, because you've given us another day of life, Father God. I bless you because you are a good Father, one who constantly watches over us, Father God, and one who only ever wants the best for us, Father God. I pray that in today's reading you open our understanding and you open our retention so that we can continue to keep this word on our minds, Father God and that it blesses us. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. We continue with Abram's story in Genesis 16. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Word of God reads, Genesis 16. Now, Sarai, Abram's wife, bore him no children. She had a servant, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. Sarai said to Abram, See now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing. <clears throat> Please go into my servant. It may be that I will obtain children by her. Abram listened to the voice of Sarai. Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, the Egyptian, her servant, after Abram had lived ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to Abram, her husband, to be his wife. He went into Hagar, and she conceived. When she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. Sarai said to Abram, This wrong is your fault. I gave my servant into your bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, she despised me. May the Lord judge between me and you. But Abram said to Sarai, Behold, your maid is in your hand. Do to her whatever is good in your eyes. Sarai dealt harshly with her, and she fled from her face. The Lord's angel found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain on the way to Shur. He said, Hagar, Sarai's servant, where did you come from? Where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from the face of my mistress Sarai. The Lord's angel said to her, Return to your mistress and submit yourself under her hands. The Lord's angel said to her, I will greatly multiply your offspring, that they could not be counted for multitude. 
the Lord's angel said to her, Behold, you are with child, and will bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has heard your affliction. He will be like a wild donkey amongst men. His hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him. He will live opposed to all of his brothers. She called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are a God who sees. For she said, Have I even stayed alive after seeing him? Therefore, the well was called Beer Lahai Roy. Behold, it is between Kadesh and Berid. Hagar bore a son for Abram. Abram called the name of his son, whom Hagar bore, Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. Genesis 17 When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. I will make my covenant between me and you and multiply you exceedingly. Abram fell on his face. God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you. You will be the father of a multitude of nations. Your name will no more be called be called Abram, but your name will be Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you. Kings will come out of you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring, after you, throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be a God to you, and to your offspring after you. I will give to you, and to your offspring after you, the land where you are traveling, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession. I will be their God. God, God said to Abraham, As for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your offspring after you, throughout their generations. This is my covenant, which you shall keep, between me and you and your offspring after you. Every male amongst you shall be circumcised. You shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskin. It will be a token of the covenant between me and you. He who is eight days old shall be circumcised amongst you, every male throughout your generations. He who was born in the house or bought with money from any foreigner who is not of your offspring. He who was born in your house and he who was bought with your money must be circumcised. My covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. An uncircumcised male who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her her name Sarai, but her name shall be Sarah. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. Yes, I will bless her, and she will be a mother of nations. Kings of people will come from her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Will a child be born to him who is one hundred years old? Will Sarah, who is ninety years old, give birth? Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. God said, No, 
but Sarah, your wife, will bear you a son. You shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant for his offspring after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply his him exceedingly. He will become the father of twelve princes and I will make him a great nation. But I will establish my covenant with Isaac whom Sarah will bear to you at this set time next year. When he finished talking with him, God went up from Abraham. Abraham took Ishmael, his son, all who were born in his house, and all who were bought with his money, every male amongst the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the same day as God had said to him. Abraham was ninety-nine years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. Ishmael, his son, was thirteen years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. In the same day, both Abraham and Ishmael, his son, were circumcised. All the men of his house, who was born, those born in the house, and those bought with money from a foreigner were circumcised with him. Genesis 18 The Lord appeared to him by the oaks of Mamre as he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. He lifted up his eyes and looked and saw that three men stood near him. When he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself to the earth and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in your sight, please don't go away from your servant. Now let a little water be fetched. Wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. I will get a piece of bread so you can refresh your heart. After that you may go your way, now that you have come to your servant. They said, Very well, do as you have said. Abraham hurried into the tent of Sarah and said, Quickly prepare three sayas of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and fetched a tender and good calf, and gave it to the servant. He hurried to dress it. He took butter, milk, and the calf which he had dressed, and set it before them. He stood by them under the tree, and they ate. They asked him, Where is Sarah, your wife? He said, There, in the tent. He said, I will certainly return to you about this time next year. And behold, Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Sarah heard in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age. Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. Sarah laughed within herself, saying, after I have grown old, will I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Will I really bear a child when I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the set time, I will return to you when the seasons come around, and Sarah will have a son. Then Sarah denied it, saying, I didn't laugh, for she was afraid. He said, No, but you did laugh. The men rose up from there and looked toward Sodom. Abraham went with them to see them on their way. The Lord said, Will I hide from Abraham what I do, 
since Abraham will surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth will be blessed in him? For I have known him to the end that he may command his children and his household after him, that they may keep the way of the Lord, to do righteousness and justice, to the end that the Lord may bring, him, bring on Abraham that which he has spoken of him. The Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether their deeds are as bad as the reports, reports which have come to me. If not, I will know. The men turned from there and went toward Sodom, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Abraham came near and said, Will you consume the righteous with the wicked? What if there are fifty righteous within the city? Will you consume and not spare the place for the fifty righteous who are in it? May it be far from you to do things like that, to kill the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous should be the wicked, be like the wicked. May that be far from you. Shouldn't the judge of all the earth do right? The Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, See now, I have taken it on myself to speak to the Lord, although I am dust and ashes. What if there will, what if there will lack f five of the fifty righteous? Will you destroy all the city for the lack of five? He said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. He spoke to him yet again and said, What if there are forty found there? He said, I will not do it for the forty's sake. He said, Oh, don't let the Lord be angry, and I will speak. What if there are thirty found there? He said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. He said, See now, I have taken it on myself to speak to the Lord. What if there are twenty found there? He said, I will not destroy it for twenty's sake. He said, Oh, don't let the Lord be angry, and I will speak just once more. What if ten are found there? He said, I will not destroy it for the ten's sake. The Lord went his way as soon as he had finished communing with Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. Thank you, Father God, for your holy word. So we see the continuations of the story of Abraham in our passage that we just read. We see that Sarai was barren, not being able to have children, and because she wanted children, she gave her servant an Egyptian named Hagar to Abraham to marry so that he can have children from her so Sarai can have children. But when Hagar had a son, there was a rift between the relationship between Hagar and Sarai. So Hagar left with Ishmael, and the Lord said that he would exceed um, Ishmael's house to a great nation. Abraham, Abram then is made a covenant with the Lord, and the covenant includes the physical act of circumcision by all of the Hebrew men in Abraham's, Abram's house, and then God renamed Abram Abraham because he would be the father of of many nations, and he changed Sarai's name to Sarah. You see, that's what God does when he comes into your life, he changes you. And in this case for Abraham, he also just changed his name and Sarah's name, Sarai's name to Sarah. And then after the covenant is made, Abraham takes all of the men of his house and he circumcises all of them in the day so they can live in the covenant with the Lord for an everlasting covenant, so all of the Hebrew men would be circumcised. And then the Lord communes with Abraham, 
and he is on his way to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, who are committing, in the eyes of God, very bad sin. And Abraham goes to God and says, you know, would you destroy the entire place? Righteous people do live in that place. Would it be right for you to destroy everyone, including the righteous? And then when he says, if there's, and then Abraham gives the number of 50, if there's 50 men in those places, will you not spare them? And then God says, for the 50, I will not condemn the entire place for the righteous' sake. And then Abraham goes, and then he keeps seeing that there's not enough until the final number is given is 10. So if there were 10 righteous men in that city, God would spare Sodom and Gomorrah. Day 17 is complete. Day 18 tomorrow, I hope you will return for it. I will pray us, pray us out, and we will go throughout our day. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you today, Father, thanking you, Father God. Thank you for giving us the ability to read the story of Abraham, Father God. Thank you that in your perfect will, you have laid down your holy word so that we may know everything that you need us to know, Father God. I pray that you keep us throughout our day. I pray that you keep us in the will of you, Father God, and your protective and loving hand. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. So Abraham now is living in the covenant of God with everyone in his house, and he is foretold that he will have a son who he will name Isaac by Sarah. We will read tomorrow in day 18. I hope you return for it. Have a blessed day.